this is Hello, My Name is Nerdy. Today I'm going to be talking about bubbles. As children, we all played with bubbles. We watched them form in their perfectly round shape, floating around our backyards, and then popping on a piece of grass. Well, first of all, what exactly is a soap bubble? Well, a bubble is a thin layer of water squished in between two layers of soap molecules which all surround a pocket of air. Because of surface tension, the bubbles take the shape that give it the lowest ratio of surface area to volume, thus reducing the surface energy. This shape is, of course, a perfect circle. Or so it seems. The circle cannot be completely round, as we don't live in a perfect world. As there is only a very thin layer of water creating the bubble, that water evaporates quickly. This causes some parts of the bubble to be thicker than others, but we will get there later. When light hits the bubble, two things will happen. Part of the ray will bounce off of the bubble immediately. The other part will continue to the back layer of the bubble and thus bounce out. The second light ray will meet up with the first light ray, but it will take longer to get there. This can cause the wave to change. This is where interference comes in. So why are bubbles colored? Because of interference. There are two types of interference, constructive and destructive. Constructive interference is when two rays of light are in sync with each other, and thus enhance each other. However, destructive interference is when two rays are out of sync with each other, and thus cancel each other out. Depending on the angle of entry and the thickness of the bubble, the waves could meet destructively and cancel out, or constructively and enhance each other. Interference is also responsible for things like the color of the sky and blue eyes. Now, it, the sky and blue eyes aren't blue because they absorb all other light except for blue, which they deflect. No, 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 it's actually, there is a hazy layer in your eye that makes shorter wavelengths scatter more than other wavelengths. Therefore, this makes your eyes look blue. However, if you have some melanin in your eye, then your eyes will appear brown, green, or hazel. The sky is colored in a similar but slightly different way. In the sky, sunlight encounters particles in the air that hinder the passage of light. These molecules allow light of longer wavelengths to pass by, but light of shorter wavelengths, like blue light, collide with these particles and scatter. If we didn't have an atmosphere, then the sky would just look black. But wait a second, why is the night sky dark? I mean, if we live in an infinite universe, which evidence suggests we do. No edge. <laughs> if we look out in any direction, shouldn't we see a distance to our galaxy? Does that mean there really is an edge to the universe? Well, there may not be a spatial edge to the universe, but as far as we know, there is a temporal one. As far as we know, there was a beginning to the universe. That means that some very, very distant stars are so far away that light from them just hasn't had time to get to us yet. Furthermore, this would mean that you can look in certain directions and get a peek at the universe before anything was there. However, this isn't the only reason. Telescopes pointed into space still see light no matter what direction they're looking. So why do telescopes see light and we don't? The answer is that telescopes are seeing infrared light. Evidence shows that the universe is expanding. And because of the Doppler effect, these stars get redshifted as they expand away from us. Eventually, they get so redshifted that they become infrared and invisible to the human eye. However, telescopes can see them. So, as you look up at the sky, look past the interference in your eyes, past the interference in the sky, and think about how you are looking into an ever-expanding, and possibly infinite, universe. Until next time, this has been Hello, My Name is Nerdy.